Color Guard. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, to, gentlemen, to honor, America, honor America, celebrating its freedom and those who protect it, let us rise and gentlemen remove their caps for the singing of our national anthem as performed today by Jacob Vaughn from Reedsville, North Carolina. I got a lot of static. Is that normal? Oh, can you see by the dawn? championship have been dashed year after year, decade after decade. It's a day that East Dublin and High Britain thought would never come. They play for the 2A football championship next. Championship Saturday in Chapel Hill, the 2A North Carolina High School Athletic Association State Football Championship. Good afternoon, everybody. Patrick Rakinas alongside former ECU Pirate Jay Sonhalter and Jay East Duplin was built in 1963. High Britain opened in 1966. That's over 100 years of high school football. Never have they been on this stage. What's the meaning today for these two schools? Well, both schools, they've waited a long time. I mean, I'm so excited for these players, coaches, and fan bases to have an opportunity to play a ball game here today to reach their goal. And every player, when they start the season, they want to win a state championship. And today's the day to make it happen. They have waited for this moment. They're both undefeated. They're both nicknamed Panthers. What are the keys for East Oakland? Well, they want to establish the running game. They want to be physical at the point of attack. And then defensively, they want to make Hi Bryan throw the ball. They do not throw the ball often. For Hi Bryan, they want to dominate on defense. That's really where the strength of their team is. And they want to create long drives on offense to control the time of possession. All right, Jay, let's move to the those the key players for this ball game. Let's talk to Chris like, Benson first. Right Troy Stuplin missed several games with a high ankle sprain, over 4,600 career yards. Well, two, of the best, two of the best running backs in the state, Chris Benson, 16 touchdowns on the year, averaging 7.9 yards per carry. He's a physical running back, and he can take a lot of hits and still find ways to get yards after contact. He's the leader of this team, and they're so excited that he's healthy here going into the playoff run. Now for High Brighton, McKinley Witherspoon over 18 and a half yards, a carry. How does he suck? I've never seen a stat like that. I mean, he's a living first down every time he touches the ball. He can take it the distance with his speed, but I'm impressed with his physical style. Only 180 pounds, but he's physical in between the tackles. An outstanding player that's only gotten better this season. They have waited a lifetime. They'll even endure some snow in Chapel Hill, but they are ready. East Duplin 15-0, High Brighton 15-0. The 2AA State Championship kickoff next. All right, they're in the break. Yep, we didn't do the coin flip yet. Correct? Sorry, I stomped on you a little bit. Oh, no. For over 50 years, dreams of okay. playing for a state football Beautiful. champion. They are not going to have their 05 kick. <laughs> it's 05 right now. Yeah. That's okay. We'll take the time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, David, what do you think? Do we have time to get Allison in before kickoff? Yeah. Yep. Okay, you got it. A little better. Okay. That's all the way up. That's all the way up. 
Okay. <coughs> Please cue me. They're doing the flip right now. I think it's just the static, static from the house, you know. All right, East Duplin won the toss. They are deferring. High Brighton is probably taking the ball. <coughs> yep. <coughs> okay. Sounds good. Back on the campus at the University of North Carolina, Keenan Stadium, the venue for the two double-A state football championships. Patrick Keenis, Jay Sonhalter up here in the very warm booth third member of our broadcast team is on the very chilly field of Keenan. It's Allison Aldridge. Allison, good afternoon. Hi, we're down here on the field and guys, it is exciting. I talked to both Coach Lewis and Coach Holly before the game and they are really excited to be here the first time. The fans are just, the snow is coming down, but the fans are excited. We're looking forward to a great game. All right, th thanks a lot, Allison. And Jay, I went to a high school in Illinois that was in the exact same position as these two schools. Didn't play for a state championship for several decades until after I graduated. Everybody came back for that state championship game back in central Illinois. What was it like for these fans as they oh. came through the gates today? Well, I mean, I walked out in the parking lot while the fans were coming in and the excitement level. It was snowing. It's freezing cold. This is football weather, but these fans... You know, they're all living their dreams for these players today. They've all gone to school, and these communities have been waiting a long time. And today, for the fan bases, their opportunity rests on these players. All right, it is 35 degrees. The winds are calm. We had some mixed rain. It's actually very thick snowflakes about 45 minutes ago. But these fans, they don't care. They have waited forever and a day for this Saturday in December to arrive. East Duplin. Out of Beulahville, North Carolina, 15-0. It's 120 miles for the Panthers to arrive. High Brighton is in the black, trimmed in red, also 15-0. They made the trip from Lenore. And East Duplin are ready to kick it off and break their maiden in the state championship game. Sit back and enjoy. Here is the approach, and we are underway from Keenan Stadium. Short kick. Handle of the 18-yard line, and this is the big key for High Brighton. That is McKinley Witherspoon on the return out beyond the 30-yard line. Well, let's take a look at who runs the controls for High Brighton. 15-0, 6-0 out of the Northwestern Foothills Conference. Their quarterback, Jalen Scott, and he leads an offense averaging about 315 yards on the ground for High Brighton. Well, and he protects the football. He's the leader being quarterback but he has to carry out all those fakes the pitches and really does a nice job again so successful this season but vocally he really communicates well with his teammates and they will run out of the triple option first carry out only for a couple of yards to about the 33 yard line that is marquan jones is averaging only about eight yards a carry pales in comparison to witherspoon in the backfield as we take a look at the starters for Highbright. Keep your eye on number 25, Witherspoon. Jalen Scott, the quarterback, won't throw a whole lot for Highbright. Yeah, and another guy there, Miles Simon. But how about that offensive line? They're relied upon to be physical at the point of attack. But Patrick, they are huge and they are big. But the most important thing is they win the battle up front to help out the running backs. On a little delay, contact right at the line of scrimmage and the big hit made by Dorian Pickett, number 15. And creates a third and long for a high Brighton offense, averaging over 42 points in contest. They're not in this predicament often. Yeah, this is a situation they're not used to. Third and long, it's a normal passing situation. But for both of these teams, expect today running plays even on third and long situations. And here's a look at the starting defense for East Duplin. We mentioned Dorian Pickett, 
He's had a huge season. Amaru Herring, number 36, 40 tackles for losses. So watch him in that backfield as well. Third down and a long nine here for Highbrighton on the first possession of the game. The keep by the quarterback, Jalen Scott, angles over the 35, but he's stacked up short in the first down. And East Duplin looks to a force to three and out to open this state championship. Uh, and East Duplin, they're getting penetration in the backfield. And Scott did a nice job with the ball fake there and did fake out this defense. But when you're in third and long situation, you know, it's tough when you pick up seven or eight yards and you can't pick up the first down. That's where they put themselves on the first drive. So Jalen Scott can't move the chains in his first possession. He is the junior quarterback. And now it is Noah Haney, the senior punter, ready to boot it away for High Brighton. Special teams will be very important in this contest on both sides. Derek Woolley, along with Melvin Scott, the key punt returners. It's a low spinner that's going to land at the 30. They take a high bright roll inside the 20. Still letting it go, swooshing the ball down to the 13-yard line. 49-yard kick with about an 18-yard roll. That will back up East Duplin. And an assist from Simon there with the, <laughs> with the push of the win. But special teams today, it's going to be a big aspect in not only tackling and kicking, but also there handling the ball on the punts. The punters, there was a lot of pressure on them with the wet balls with the snow coming down. So East Duplin led by their senior quarterback, Cameron Hall, threw for only 505 yards this year, but he ran for over 800. So we'll watch Cameron Hall, the senior. But Chris Benson, number two in their backfield, he is going to be uh, the linchpin for East Duplin. First down from inside its own 15-yard line. Quick handoff, a little bit of room across the 15, and then stopped after a pickup of about five. You see Chris Benson very quick off the ball, had it in his guts, and that first step, yeah, quick they, acceleration. And Patrick, he just kind of hid behind that offensive line, and when they can get that initial push, it's going to help him get open. And here's a look at the starters. Benson ran for over 1,300 yards this year. Melvin Scott just under 1,000. Jalen Mitchell also over 900. So it's not only Benson, although he'll be the certainly the focal aspect of this Panther offense. Matt at the line, driven back by a cavalry of Panthers. Charles Tassinari, number 36, with a little gator chop after that <laughs> stick in the line of scrimmage. And now it's third down mid-range for East Duplin. And he's the strength of that defense. Six foot one, 230 pounds. He's a beast. He's all over the field. You can see it there. He's physical when he goes in for tackles. And Tassinari, 20 tackles for losses, led the team with 122 tackles overall. Noah Hay, number 52. 38 tackles for losses. Third down and four on East Duplin's first possession of the game. They need to reach the 23-yard line. Swinging out around the right corner. First down yardage and more out across the 30. Melvin Scott down the sideline. Swerves back to the open field. No flags are down. Scott being chased toward the goal line. And he is in. Touchdown, Melvin Scott. 81 yards. East Duplin strikes first. What a way to start for the Panthers, Patrick. They outflanked the defense there. And Scott with his speed right here getting a look at the blocking up front. A great job pulling by Wyland Silence. And then just the speed and breaking away. 19th touchdown on the season. But Scott, again, was patient as he waited for that offensive line to pull. And then the breakaway speed was too much for the defense. There is the first chunk play of the game and what we expect to see many. Penalty marker is down before the extra point try by Jesus Navarro. Prior to the snap, encroachment. That'll give East Duplin an opportunity to catch his breath. <laughs> Melvin Scott, 81 yards. I was really impressed. He had an extra level of speed once he grabbed that sideline and had defenders chase it. So Jesus Navarro, a senior, who kicked eight field goals over the course of this unbeaten season, drives it right through. And with 8-14 left in the opening quarter, the third and four turns into the 81-yard touchdown sprint by Melvin Scott. East Duplin, high break their first ever state championship appearance and the first strike to Melvin Scott and East Duplin.
Everything good, David? Okay. Okay. Hey, did you catch my uh, my comment on the on the score graphic? Okay. Yeah. Touch, touchdown was given on the graphic to the wrong team. Yep. Okay. Great. Thanks. Through the opening quarter, seven nothing in favor of East Duplin. Short kick of Hannibal Highbright and one of the up men down the sideline, and Skyland Thomas hanging a lot of bounds, trying to kick it away from Simon and also Witherspoon. You would give up field position there because they do have other weapons, and Thomas is one of them. Well, and also too with the conditions, it puts a lot of pressures on the returners. But Thomas doing a nice job of first securing the football and then getting positive yards down the sideline. Now we'll see what type of reply we get from a high bright. Clay Lewis in his eighth year as the head coach of this Panthers team. They only gave up 10 points a game. They've given up seven on the first possession for East Duplin. Jalen Scott under center on first down. And this will go only for a couple of yards straight up the middle. We've seen a very solid front seven so far. Slowing down Hayden White for a couple of yards. So important for specifically the defensive line to get off the football, Patrick. Both of these teams offensively, they're going to have some quick hits in the running game, giving the ball to the fullback so that defensive line can't get pushed back because if they get pushed back, then the double teams are going to be able to get established on the second level and really create big running lanes. Here's a look at Clay Lewis, 29th year on this staff. Here's a toss to Witherspoon, gets past one, and trying to get away from Melvin Scott, who has caught his breath. And catches him toward the sideline. So Witherspoon trying to get him more in space to the long side of the field. Third down, medium range again for Highbright. Well, let's look at him break the angle right here. Scott, after his big touchdown run, you know, he's tasked with bringing down Witherspoon. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing it all out there. Doing a nice job pushing him out of bounds. Yeah, Melvin Scott has already earned his postgame meal. Yeah. Ball just shy of midfield. Third down, we'll call it six for Highbright. Come out of the under center. Witherspoon in motion. Contact. And behind the line of scrimmage. Going down. Richard Miller, number 53, got in there along with Hibaru Herring, who is known for his tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Two straight three and outs forced by the East Duplin defense. Uh, and Herring, he's a bull down there. Look at him there. Getting penetration. He beat his block. He was three yards in the backfield. Nowhere to go if you're a running back. Good job using his hands getting off the block. You know, kicking into a very slight wind. Noah Haney. Protection is on for Highbright. Snap is clean. And with the left boot, sends it on the way. This will land outside the 20. Take another Highbright and bounce. Can it be stopped by Simon inside the five? It is. Down at the three yard line by Tanner Tucker. Second time we've seen, perhaps intentionally, some low line ride kicks from Haney through the little breeze with the golfer's touch near the goal. Yeah, using the turf as your friend there. And boy, that roll bounced about 15 yards. Again, backed up here in your end zone. Didn't really affect the first drive, but here in this defense, they're going to have to do a better job taking their angles and pursuing the football. That's why they gave up that first big touchdown. The East Duplin, their second offensive sequence of the day begins inside its own five-yard line. So perhaps a chance for the high right defense to change field position. And the handoff goes to the fullback. This is Chris Benson to the left side. First down yardage. 17 yard line. the blocking up front, right up the middle for Benson. He was patient and then he made that cut, getting to the outside. You see how he drove two ball carries, very physical running back. There's a look at Matt O'Holly, the son of the legendary late Jack Holly, who is the North Carolina High School Athletic Association all time leader in wins. His father had 412. Battle now goes for his first state title. Swerving through. Melvin Scott again. Open space. Dragging a defender out across the 40 to the 45-yard line. 
Melvin Scott, we did not profile him as the broadcast began, but he's becoming a spotlighted guy for East Duplin. Well, we saw him run to the outside. The first touchdown run there, misdirection with Benson going to the left, but then right up the gut. Scott, again, able to kind of hide there with the misalignment and then hit it strong and then finish off that run with power. Melvin Scott now leads this team with 19 touchdowns this year. Had that 81-yard scamper on their first possession. This is a lethal one-two punch in the backfield for East Duplin. First down from the 44. This is Benson slipped a little bit just as he tried to cut back. Again, we were on the turf before the game a couple of hours ago, really before the snow began to fall. And the field's in pretty good shape. But again, a lot of snow, sleet, and rain in the area. Postal carriers, uh, a yeah. nightmare <laughs> yesterday and into today. But the field will certainly get a little bit slicker as this afternoon moves along. Yeah, you're right. UPS, bad day for those guys out there. But for these players, with this accumulation starting to come on the field, it was a great condition. The field looks beautiful. But whenever you're in a big game like this, you're trying to make quick cuts, you know, sometimes you do lose your balance. And tipped him well, by the way. Second down yeah. after a pickup of four. This is Scott probing and can't escape an ankle tackle by Kevon Wilson in the backfield and finally they slow down Melvin Scott third down. And these linebackers for High Brighton you know, very physical players you see Tassinari there a big play earlier but they're gonna have to use their speed to get that penetration and then see a couple other guys jumping on the pile good job rallying with the ball. Well Cameron Hall the quarterback for East Dublin only threw the ball 66 times this year it's third and almost seven. So Tassinari is the quarterback of this defense, the leader, the captain. What are they expecting here? And it looks like we will get a timeout taken by East Duplin. 4.48 left in the opening quarter. So it, it's kind of that mid-range. Are we going to run? Are we going to pass? What will the options be? So as Battle of Holly makes those decisions on the sideline, his team up an early score. 7-0 East Duplin on top of high break in the 2 AA state championship for Chapel Hill. TOC hold up play if you can. They're not ready to snap the ball. Yep. <laughs> On a third and six play, only a pickup of a yard or two out to midfield. So the defense for Highbright stands tall. The question is here, Jay, was Battle how I call that timeout? to design two plays. This is fourth down territory near midfield, or are they punting? Yeah, and I would have thought they would have gone for two plays, especially if they picked up positive yards, but they only got about one yard, and still on fourth down here, I think the smart play, you've got the lead, go ahead, let your special teams punt the ball away and put a long field here for the offense coming back out. So back to return, McKinley Witherspoon, very dangerous, and there's a high, short kick into some thicker snowflakes falling. This will be down at the 22-yard line. 7-0 lead for East Duplin. So Highbright will go in his third possession of this game. What have you seen from the Panthers' offense on the Highbright side over its first two, three outs? Where do they need to change things up? They need to have success on first down. That's the key for them. They've been placed in second and third and long situations. They'll pick up positive yards on third down. They just haven't been able to convert. I think the key is first down success, but also the offensive line getting push in the middle but also they've got to run to the ball to the outside McKinley's extremely fast they gotta let him use his speed first down Highbright yet to pick up its first first down of the game they go to Marquand Jones the junior fullback for maybe a yard and as this snow begins to thicken a little bit this is something that Highbright is it's not foreign to them because when they left earlier today five inches of snow had fallen 
as they were leaving Lenore. A lot of snow, about eight inches down in Atlanta, several inches in Charlotte, five inches in Lenore. They had a police escort to get out of the county and get on the clean roads to make their first trip over. Pitch to the right side, gathered it nicely by Witherspoon, but still stopped short of the markers around the 28-yard line. Good pursuit on the perimeter by the East Duplin defense. But a lot of credit to Scott and Witherspoon handling that ball. It's tough. I mean, it's snowing out there hard now. It's really coming down, but they're now a third and manageable situation. Again, I think you've got to get Witherspoon the ball on the outside. You see the big game there. They need to try that again to try to loosen up this defense because the middle of this defense has been stout so far. So Jalen Scott brings them to the line of scrimmage. They need the 31-yard line. Still looking for their first first down in this state championship. A little inside handoff. Witherspoon to hit right in the line of scrimmage, then powered back again by the East Duplin defense. On top of the pile, Demetrius Scarborough. And it's fourth down again for High Brighton. And they are unaccustomed to the lack of success offensively as they've seen today. Well, and the offensive line is huge. I mean, they are physical, but the defense is playing. They're winning with speed. And again, another successful third down for that defense getting off the field here. So we will see Noah Haney for the third time in this opening quarter. There have been games this year where Haney has putted twice an entire contest. And with the left boot, since this went a high, good leverage. And the ball muffed at the 30-yard line. It is loose. Is high right on it? They are. First turnover of the game is critical. Haney White shows the football to the heavens. The first quarter that has not gone high Brighton's way might have just turned around on that muff. Well, heck of a punt by Haney there. I mean, this driving snow down there. And look at him. Well, that's a great kick, great loft on that. And as the ball comes down here, not able to secure it, and that's what you have to do if you're on that punt coverage unit. Set up there like the ball's going to be loose. And like, perfect position and a huge play for this offense. A tough mistake for Derek Woolley, unable to handle Haney's kick. So zero first downs and three possessions for High Brighton. Here they are inside the East Duplin 30-yard line. Down a touchdown, but suddenly with momentum. Still hasn't put a whole lot of aloe on the kind of on the, uh, the the bruises and the scabs of what they've done offensively in this first quarter, but a chance now to make amends. Handoff, first man through. And Again, Jones not going anywhere. Roderick Miller, number 34, along with Scarborough in the combo tackle. Well, for Hyde Bryan, this offensive line, they're just getting beat. Watch right here. They're going to push back. Penetration is coming through. A nice job by Miller right there. Beating the double team, splitting it. And these defensive linemen, you know, they know what's coming. They know what's running plays, and they know they have to win that battle. And there's Scarborough playing tight end on offense but defensive end wise his strength is his speed coming off the edge well when you throw for about 28 yards a game as high brighton does at some point they're going to have to mix things up here's a pitch another good gather by witherspoon cuts it up outside the hashes inside the 25 but here we are again third down and about mid-range five to go here for high brighton as we now move toward the final minute of this opening quarter well this game with all the running plays going very quickly Skyland Thomas, whenever you have running backs out there that has so much success running the ball in this type of offense, you also have to be unselfish blocking. Thomas, a huge block there, but again, here, I would run the ball to the outside, get Witherspoon out on the edge. Play snap with about 38 seconds left in the first quarter. The pitch, and then the power and pile rider by Dorian Pickett. Read that play, he was the spy on the option toss and just planted down another high right Panther on the backfield. And look at Pickett right here, coming off the edge. No one really blocking him there, and it looked like High Brighton wasn't ready. It looked like there was a miscommunication there as the ball snapped. And now a situation fourth and long, but you can't really kick a field goal in these weather conditions. So they're going to go for it here and try to pick up the, a big game to get the first down. And will they allow the clock to wind down to end the first quarter and have a little bit of wind in their backs on this fourth down? And no whistles blow. They get it off. Scott will throw. It's tipped in the air, and it's caught by Highbrighton for a first down. 
What a fortuitous deflection that was grabbed on the sideline on a fourth down play that was just snapped before the clock hit triple zero. And sometimes you need a little bit of luck there. <laughs> Lucky that wasn't picked off. But because of the weather, it's hard to catch it, and it slipped off the defense. And look at Scott here rolling out, picking, getting pressure. But then that ball just bounced off of the hands of Laquan Brown. And what a break for Highright. The muffed punt, and now a deflected pass caught for a first down on fourth down. They're in the red zone when the second quarter begins. Down seven. <laughs> oh. Oh, this must be super embarrassing. Let me get that terrible driver I just got pulled over for. Click. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Whether you're a driver or a passenger, you're required by law to buckle up or face a fine up to $161. Click it or ticket. Every seat, every time. Second quarter ready to begin from Keenan Stadium on the campus of the University of North Carolina. It's the two AA state championship. East Duplin with a 7 0 lead on Highbright, who just picked up its first first down of the game on a tip pass caught on a fourth down play. So it's first down inside the red zone. Delay handoff. Witherspoon hit in the backfield again and plowed back by a cadre of East Duplin defenders, including Jordan Mitchell right there. They have had nothing, Jay, between the tackles. Uh, and you look at this defensive line, all of these guys have so many tackles for loss, hearing 40 tackles for loss. You know, Miller, Dorian Pickett, 24 on the season. So these guys live in the backfield. They're used to doing that. Again, we talked about trying to get the ball to the outside. Hi, Brian has to do that. Now they stack three in the backfield. This is Witherspoon angling right to the 20, but very little yardage again and creates another third and a very long situation for Highbright. Richard Miller in there on the tackle for East Duplin. And this, to me, has to be four down territory. You've got to go into this third down with two plays trying to pick up the first down. Temperatures mid-30s. Fans of each of these two schools do not care. <laughs> Some are in short sleeves. They've been waiting lifetimes to be here on this field. Third down and 12. Scott will drop back, throw off his back foot. It's up for grabs, and it is intercepted inside the five-yard line by Jalen Thomas. 
We don't see Scott throw off on only 51 attempts over the course of the year. Intercepted once until that one, but trying to do something to loosen up, especially the front seven of East Duplin, and throws a pick inside the five. Yeah, well, and Scott rolled out opposite of his throwing hand. The, the offensive line gave him time to throw it, but Scott, his third interception on the season, I think Coach Lewis really recognized he had to open this offense up to try to give this running attack a little bit of room and try to keep the defense off balance there, not able to execute, and a nice pick by Thomas. And now back to Cameron Hall, who would take this snap out of his own end zone on first down. He will give. There's a hit in the backfield. Is he going to get it back to the goal line? He will not. Benson driven back into the end zone. It's a safety. And Highbright on the board. Not doing much offensively, but a big defensive boost for Highbright. Uh, this defense, you know, they're creating a spark here. Look at the penetration right here. A nice hit and multiple guys back there. And the first hit was made by Skyland Thomas, number 27, raged into the backfield. And again, where that inter interception took place around the one-yard line, Hall was taking the snap out of his own end zone, even on the quick handoff to Benson. His acceleration couldn't get him outside of his end zone. Yeah, and Thomas, he's a safety, and so important in today's ball game for both teams' safety play. Those guys, they're going to be asked to be physical and run support, and Thomas there flying in there, like you said, very physical and getting his nose in there to create a big play. So now East Duplin will have to punt it away, and Highbright will have a chance now. Again, they've had one first down that really had no influence on anything so far today for their offense, but they will have possession with a chance to grab a lead. We we'll talked earlier in the week with their head coach, Clay Lewis, who again has been on this staff for almost three decades, eighth year now as the head man. He wanted to keep this week as, as simple to normal as possible, whether it's a state championship day or week three of the regular season. So talking with some of their administration here at the stadium today, they said they had the opportunity of taking a charter bus here for the team to the state championship. Coach Lewis says no. We're going on our regular activity bus, just as we've done over the 15 games this year that we have won. He didn't want to change a thing as far as the routine goes, and you as a former ECU Pirate know exactly what that means. Well, you want to be consistent with your approach, and if you're having success doing it one way, why change it up just because you know, you're at a bigger stadium and, and it's a bigger game? And A lot of credit to him knowing his team, keeping things the same as normal for them to come out and have success and familiarity with their game plan coming into today's game. Right, Navarro tees it up. The kick is handled by Simon. 35 flag is down. Simon in sees Duplin territory before he's angled out at about the 36. But a penalty marker behind the play right in midfield. And this return is coming back. It'll be an illegal block on Highbright. So the gates, excellent field position and plus territory. By the time they walk off this flag, Jay, this may cost High Brighton about 30 or 35 yeah. yards. Here's the official call. During the return, block in the back, receiving team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Yep. And that block in the back, Patrick, you cannot do that anywhere on the field, but especially in the open field where it's easy for the referees to see you. They'll call it every time. And Tyler Watson, the infraction. So from one 36-yard line to the other. So 28 yards lost on that penalty. And now the possession begins for High Brighton at the 36. Hand off left side, out across the 40 to about the 44-yard line. Tackle Jalen Thomas, bring it down Marquand Jones. First ever title appearance for both of these sides. High Brighton last year lost in the regional finals. And in talking with Clay Lewis, he said, ever since he reassembled his team in January of 2017, this has been the goal since that regional final loss. They lost 15 seniors off of that team, but they played a lot of young kids. 12 sophomores started, eight others played some significant time as Scott finds some open territory, and that might be the second first down of the game for Highbright. And 
and they will move the chains first down. And right here on that fake handoff was Marquand Jones going up the middle. There are about four defenders trying to tackle him. That's what's so tough about this offense is the, the fake handoffs, the misalignment, the movement. If you're a defender, you really have to play with your eyes, find the football, and attack and pursue impacts, and your teammates really have to fly around okay. the ball. Not going to be at all surprised if we see now a lot of things to the wide side of the field because there has been – this is going to be a pass from the backfield to a wide open Simon down the sideline. He's got it. Miles Simon into the end zone. Touchdown. However, there's a flag down back in the 40. Simon and Highbright celebrating. Will the score count? This may go on East Duplin. Here's the call. Is it a lead for Highbright? We're coming back. The result of the play is a touchdown. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. 53 yards on a halfback pass from Witherspoon to Simon, who got six yards behind the defense on the little tomfoolery play from the high Brighton offense. That is Witherspoon's first pass of the season, and he got drilled, Patrick. Dorian Pickett was the person that got hit up with that penalty, but what a throw and a perfect time for Coach Lewis to call that trick play. And Haney for the extra point, just enough gas on that extra point to get it through. And just like that, safety. And then the trick play by Highbright. That might loosen things up. Suddenly, it's Highbright on the, in the lead, 9-7. Sportsmanship means a lot of things. It means showing respect for the opposing team. Being a good host for our visitors. It's about modeling good behavior not getting caught up in the emotion of the moment. It's about winning with humility. Losing with dignity. It is about making my high school game. It's a good memory that I can enjoy for years to come. Mr. Official. Mom. Dad. Son. Daughter. Coach. Are we in this together? Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. Together, together we, we make the right call. This message has been brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. for East Duplin. Possession for East Duplin. Safety. Then the touchdown pass from Witherspoon. One of the running backs to his partner in crime, Miles Simon. 9-7 high right now in the lead. Isn't it amazing how one play can really spark your team? That safety happens. You get two points on the board. Then great special teams. Then trick play. Then all of a sudden your offense isn't playing well and turns into a lead that quick with a smart kickoff, maybe a chance to pin East Duplin back, but because of that penalty for roughing the passer on the back end of that touchdown pass, that kickoff was from plus territory for Highbright, but it carries into the end zone. A reminder, fans, all eight state championship games are streaming online at nfhsnetwork.com. So check that out as we continue on state championship Saturday from all around the ACC venue here in North Carolina. 9-7, Highbright leading. And Cameron Hall brings the offense back onto the field, hands off Chris Benson. And Benson driving a couple of defenders out to about the 25, good first down carry. Uh, this East Duplin team, you know, they were kind of in the driver's seat there in that first quarter, and now you look up and you've got a deficit. We talked in the open about controlling the time of possession, providing long drives, important for both teams here. But that's exactly what East Duplin needs here to continue to try to get that momentum back. Now East Duplin, they've run the ball quite well here in the first half. And again, they've seized momentum and had it 
for most of this contest. A little inside handoff, a nice one-on-one -on -one tackle outside the 25-yard line. Carson Pinkleton is there for the big stick. If he doesn't make that tackle go low and stay fundamental, that's a big play. And yeah, that's the hardest tackle in an open field situation where you know it's either you making the tackle or it's going to be a big play. And Pinkleton, nice job staying low, keeping his head up, being very physical. Now suddenly the high Brighton fans trying to urge their defense to get their first three and out of this contest. East Duplin needs four. 8.15 left until halftime. High Brighton leading 9-7. Hand off, short side of the field. Bumping off a couple of tackles, but he won't get there. Hayden White and others were there for the stick. And there's the celebration by the Panthers defense. Charles Tassinari comes off the field after a third down stop. And High Brighton is going to get the football right back. Well, credit White on this play. Look at him really set the edge. Number two right there. He bottled Benson and forced him to go back inside. Tossinari and the rest of the teammates on defense flew to the football, but it was Wyke that really pushed Benson back inside and enabled success for the defense. So now fourth down and punting into the win for the first time. East Duplin rolling to the right. Cameron Hall, he's going to tuck and run. He has the first down and more to the 45. Lowers his shoulder and takes it almost out to midfield. Looked like kind of a punt option for their quarterback, Cameron Hall. And there was no rush coming. He saw a lot of vacant space off to his right. And if you're on that punt unit defensively, you've got to make sure he actually punts the ball. And there was just a rugby kick. And Coach Holly, a lot of confidence in Hall, his senior quarterback there on the punt. If he had room to run, he told him to go. And Hall followed those instructions. And what a big play. We talked about special teams being huge. Well, right there, a nice conversion to pick up the first down. Well, that decision would make Battle Holly's father so proud. 21 yards on fourth down, not a direct snap, and Hall into high Brighton territory for about five. Well, these games, when you look back at the end, it really comes down to a play here, a play there. And we've already seen some momentum changing tight plays happen to special teams, the safety, big plays on offense and defense. And I think that's the other key here today, Patrick, is Who's going to limit big plays? Who's going to limit their mistakes? Sometimes it's, you know, whichever team makes fewer mistakes. We've well, seen one big play on both sides. Turn it over on both sides. And on second and five, Benson throwing forward for a body yard. But I tell you what, Charles Tassinari, number 36, is basically everywhere, sprinting from sideline to sideline from his linebacker spot. He's in on virtually every tackle. Uh, he's a he's a big kid. We'll see him right here, 230 pounds. Nice hit by Watson, Tassinari, White. All three of those guys, they had to be physical there because that was a pull play where the tight end pick it and also the guard and tackle were pulling out there, and they won their matchups, and Watson along that defensive line doing a good job getting off the ball. And he'll anchor this defense next year for High Brighton. This is third down, a short five. Little jet sweep, Devon Hunter, nowhere to go. And now it's High Brighton's defense flexing its muscles. Hunter couldn't get there. And now here we are again, midfield, fourth down. Your quarterback is also your punter. You just continue this drive by the fake punt where he picked up 21. We'll see what Pat Holly draws up. And he'll keep his entire offense on the field. I would run the ball away from White. He's been outstanding. He made that last tackle here. I'd run it away from number two. Need to reach the 43-yard line. Play clock at 10. High Brighton remaining disciplined. Four on the play clock. The snap and the give. The power drive will leave Benson, and he's to open short. So High Brighton gets the stop. It's first down the other way as... Tassinari just indicated. Um, for this defense or High Brighton, you know, they gave up that big play to Scott on the first drive, but they really started to settle down. So a lot of credit to them being in a big ball game, but here a crucial play on fourth down. As Tassinari again, Wyke, we've called their names countless times already. Simon jumping in, three of the best players on the team all there, making a crucial stop on fourth down. So this drive now for High Brighton begins at their own 46-yard line with a two-point lead. They were down 7-0 at the end of one. Toss, Witherspoon, 
cut down. Looked like there might have been a little bit more there for him, but Jalen Mitchell tracked him down with good pursuit. Yeah, it's good to see Witherspoon back out there. Looks like he's healthy after that big shot he took from Pickett on that throw. He got up slowly. They need him today, and especially his speed. That's really the difference in his game, his ability to get to the outside and take off. It's really interesting is from our perspective up here because these undefeated teams playing for state championship probably didn't see a great deal of adversity over the course of the year as uh, White goes for a couple of yards. But here they are already. Their, their mental strength is being tested. First quarter, the mental kind of fortitude of Mike Wright. And, and now they have East Duplin, which looked to be in control in first quarter. Suddenly they're back on their heels, down a couple, and with the defense Go! on the field. You know, and f football is such a physical game, and everybody thinks it's about execution and, and being physical, and, and that's true. But it's also very mental, and there's so much emotion going into this game. And to start this game off, you have to control your emotions. And if the momentum isn't swinging your way, you have to find a way to get it back. Third and five, they run the option. This is White stretching forward inside the 45. This will be close. Protecting the ball with both hands, powering forward. We may get a measurement here, although it appears to be a tad short. So there will be no measurement. 340 left until halftime. It is fourth down for High Brighton, and they will go. And again, they averaged about 10 yards a carry as a team this year. They need about three inches. And the clock will be stopped by the officials. Looked like Scott was having trouble with his buttoning his chin strap up there. And good teammate like White helping him out. Well, they don't want to have Jalen Scott leave the field yeah. in this critical play on fourth down. So, look, th this is teamwork I exemplified here. <laughs> you, you, you can't leave the field here. We have to get this fixed. <laughs> Hayden White has been the other quarterback for I right now. They do appear to get it all straightened out. And now we will resume. This is fourth down. So Scott under center. He will keep, and he will thrust the legs forward, and he will pick up the first down. Nice, safe play call yes. by Clay Lewis. Uh, Jalen Scott there buckled up his chin strap because he knew he was going to get the ball <laughs> a, a fourth and short situation, usually a quarterback sneak, and he ran it right behind Josh Baker and Tanner Barrier, getting leverage, getting low, and allowing the quarterback through. So it's first down, and now – hobbling off the field as a member of High Brighton's offense. It looks like one of their offensive linemen, Austin Sturgis. That's who it is, number 56. So Sturgis banged up. He looks in pain, helped by a teammate and one of the athletic trainers for the Panthers to the sideline. First down, motion on the line, and this will go against High Brighton. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, this right now, Jay, sets up perfectly for Highbright. Trailed by seven, you're in the lead, you're in plus territory, 253 left, and if you can churn up some yards and get some points, you keep the football away from East Duplin the rest of the half. Yeah, and their, their second quarter here really has been theirs. The first quarter was not, but going into the half here, if you're able to continue this drive, use the clock and score, that would be huge. Scott kept, slipped a little bit as he darted toward the near sideline. He will stay in bounds and get those five yards back off of that penalty. Second down and 10 as the second quarter clock proceeds toward 220. And you know, here, Patrick, as they move across the 50 yard line, you've got to have a plan calling plays because second down here, they're not going to punt it on fourth down or kick a field goal here. You've got to have a plan. You've got three more plays to pick up this first down. And you have three timeouts before halftime. By the time this play is snapped, we're going to be below two minutes. Scott looking to throw. He wants Simon. He's behind the defense. Makes a beautiful adjustment. Fingertip catch. Touchdown, Simon, from 43 yards. Jalen Scott connects. And High Brighton has awoken in this 2AA championship in the second quarter. Uh, Coach Lewis really opening up the playbook, Patrick. This is a team that does not throw the ball very often.
Upton, only 51 attempts for Scott coming into the game, and he got drilled again by Pickett. But look at the catch by Simon, almost like Willie Mays there in center field over his shoulders. But he ran a post route, beat the safeties. They were sneaking up there in run support. And Simon playing defense, offense wide receiver, making another huge play getting on the board. Extra points on the way and good. And as little as High Brighton throws the football, that is just the third touchdown reception for Miles Simon. You'll see him in the Shrine Bowl in a couple of weeks, North Carolina, South Carolina. 16 unanswered by a High Brighton. Really, 16 7 late first half. Sixteen seven, High Brighton leading East Duplin. One fifty-three left until halftime. Let's go downstairs to Allison Aldridge, who has an update on Sturtis. Allison. Thanks very much. Return on the kickoff to about the 30-yard line. So for East Duplin going a little bit into the non-scoring side of the field, as we've seen in this first yeah. half here, Jay. Two timeouts, minute 48 to go. Suddenly you're down by nine, so you don't want to just sit on the football and go to halftime. You need to capitalize on every possession. Well, they came out strong, but it's been quiet since that first drive, and they've got to find a way here to get a big drive, to get some momentum back, but also here plenty of time with those timeouts and their big play ability, especially on the ground. Front line for the hybrid Panthers has really come through in this second quarter. They have limited Chris Benson's efficacy. Certainly he's going to be the guy that East Duplin will focus on here. Rolling out Cameron Hall. He wants to throw man-on-man -man coverage. It is dropped by Dorian Pickett. He had a step on the defender. It was a little bit behind him. Trying to make a corkscrew catch second down. Uh, Pickett, you know, we've seen him really be a star on defense there tight end and it's hard he's not wearing gloves out there and boy look at him look how wet and dirty he is out in the field a, a tough when you're going with your momentum across the field you have to turn back and that ball slippery only six seconds off the clock second and ten and now little reverse action cutting back through the middle beyond the 30 I believe that's Jalen Thomas to about the 31 so a double handoff there brings up third down. And now all of a sudden, if you're hybrid, you're thinking, get a stop here, call a timeout, save a little clock, and maybe score again. Yeah, for them here, a third and long situation. You know, they didn't really think that they have an opportunity to get the ball back with the ground attack of East Duplin, but an opportunity for a big stop here on third down. He to reach the 39. Hall looking to throw again with time. Tucks, runs, needs a block. And still on his feet, and with that second effort, he has the first down. What a big pickup by Cameron Hall, showing great patience by their senior quarterback. Well, it's amazing how he kind of just strolls out of the backfield. We'll see him here, no rush, looking to throw the ball again, looking for Pickett. And then right here he turns on the Jets right there and gets physical. A nice block out front by Benson, his running back, springing him for the first down. 
changes now the landscape of this final minute of this second quarter. 105 left, clock holding for the moment. High Brighton leading 16 to seven. Hall again with time to throw, rolls to the right, needs another block, he gets it. He's to midfield, jukes against Tessarine on the sideline. He's to the 35 and another big gain by Cameron Hall getting the job done and that'll stop the clock again with 49 seconds to go in the first half. Uh, now keep running that play, let it Hall roll out let him try to throw the ball, and if it's not there, then go ahead, let him take off, because there it's a situation where the wide receivers are holding up the DBs, and there's just a one-on-one -on -one block out front by the running back. If they make that block, Hall's been able to succeed and pick up the first. And now a timeout taken by Highbrighton. Well, this thing has really changed in the last two plays. It looked like Highbrighton, if they get that stop, might be getting the football back with two timeouts and maybe a short field. Suddenly now they're trying to protect their nine-point lead. Pretty wise timeout, though, taken by Clay Lewis because uh, right now they now need to have somebody spy on the quarterback of East Oakland and Cameron Hall. Well, I think that spy has to be Tassinari. We were talking about him being all over the field. He's the middle linebacker, the strength of this defense. He's got to really shadow him and also Wyke on the outside with his speed. He's really set the edge. So those two guys are going to be pivotal here on the final drive going into half. Now, one thing to keep in mind, basically no points have been scored at this end of the field to which East Duplin is driving now. A little bit of a breeze. The flags aren't moving a whole lot above the top of Keenan Stadium, but it's swirling a little bit down and into the face of, of uh, East Duplin going toward this side. So two possession, two scores down. You're thinking six points yeah. if you can get it here by the end of the half. First down for the 34. Hall tap of the foot, sends a man in motion. Straight back to throw, releases this time. Down the middle, it's in the air, and it is intercepted by Highbrighton. The pickoff by Highbrighton denies that drive. Skyland Thomas, his second big defensive play of the game. Uh, Thomas playing center field back there, and a little bit surprised that they threw the ball, especially in the double coverage. Hall. Only his fourth interception on the season. Very accurate, plenty of time to throw the ball, but it kind of looked like the ball slipped out there, Patrick, with these conditions, the snow coming down. And High Brighton taking advantage, getting off the field. And boy, do they have the momentum. A bleak first quarter, but this second quarter, they really took off, and it started with that safety on defense. So another turnover by East Duplin. Gives the football and a nine-point lead back to High Brighton with 41 seconds left in the first half. And certainly they will stay as conservative as possible here to wind up what has been a shocking lead shifting second quarter for High Brighton. Well, I think going into the half, both coaches are going to be pleased with some aspects, but then there's a lot of mistakes and a lot of things they need to clean up if they want to finish off this game and get the state championship trophy at the end. So the clock ticking down. And High Brighton does not need to snap it again. They trailed by seven at the end of the first quarter. East Duplin had the football off of a punt at the two yard line, but a sack in the end zone sparked the rally for High Brighton and led to a 16 point onslaught in the second quarter. First ever state championship appearance for either side and heading to the locker rooms. It is High Brighton at the break leading East Duplin 16 to 7 will hold as we wait to hear from the High Brighton head coach Clay Lewis heading toward the locker room. Your and let's send it downstairs. Here's Allison with Coach Lewis. Allison. Hi, I'm down here with Coach Lewis. Coach Lewis, big stop going into the half. Um, defense has really settled in. They're playing a great game. What are you going to say to your team at halftime? Well, you know, we, we, our defense has kind of settled in a little bit. You know, offensively, we got a lot of things we got to get straight. They're really just kind of uh, dominating us up front right now, and uh, you know we, we got to find some ways to get some positive yards on the ground. But you know, uh, kids have played hard so far, and we'll go in at halftime, make a few adjustments, and hopefully come out in the second half and finish this thing. Absolutely, good luck. We'll see you after the half. Uh, we're down here on the field. Aaron Sturge, Dedge for High Bright, number 56. He did walk off with an ankle injury, so we're checking into that. Uh, he did limp off. We hope he'll be okay. Um, but it is very exciting down here on these field. I think it's going to come down to who has the most heart. All right. Thanks a lot, Allison. Appreciate appreciate your time. Coach Lewis, stay tuned for the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Halftime Report. Q-Talk.
16-7, the halftime lead for High Brighton over East Duplin in the two AA state football championships. We welcome you back to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Championships halftime report. Patrick Keenis, Jay Sonhalter up here in the very warm booth. And earlier, Allison had an opportunity to sit down with the commissioner of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, Miss Q Tucker, on this very special day across the state. Thank you for, for joining us here. Um, Let's talk some high school football, shall we? Let's I know do. sportsmanship has been a, a big emphasis of the NCHSAA lately, giving out the sportsmanship awards before games. Right. Just talk about the evolution of why this has become so important for the NCHSAA. Well, obviously, we are about education-based athletics, and uh, while we certainly care about the winning and, and the running and the jumping and all of those kinds of things, we also recognize and understand that ultimately these young people who participate in our programs will move out into the world, so to speak. They leave our high school ranks and they go to college. Some of them go straight into workforce. Some of them go into the military. Whatever they may do, we want them to understand that civility and uh, treating others the right way and mm -hmm. really the, the golden rule, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, is something that we really care about. And we just believe that through our programs, we have the perfect opportunity to help young people understand that they can be good sports and at the same time still be very, very competitive. Changed around the, the playoffs a little bit this year, went with the different percentages mm -hmm. and, and went with more with the max preference ratings. How do you think that worked out for you and, and going forward? Uh, how do you look at going through that process? There were some issues and there were some concerns. Uh, by and large, the teams that came through the process, as I said today at our conference, um, the teams, regardless of the rankings, uh, they ended up here today and most of them are either undefeated right. or they only have one loss to right. their record. And so I think that speaks a lot about the process yeah. in the final analysis. Another thing that's changed a lot, safety, uh, especially in football. Uh, a lot of safety changes have happened over the last, especially 10 years. Uh, can you just talk to uh, the things that the NCHSA has done, especially head injuries are always the thing everyone wants, wants to talk about, just what your organization has done with safety. Back in 2008, we had, unfortunately, some deaths that we yeah. had to deal with. Our sports medicine committee came in, took a look at what we were doing, and said, all right, first thing we need to do is have an emergency action plan at every school. So that was required yeah. immediately. Every student who has a head injury or a suspected concussion cannot return to play until they've been seen by a doctor. But we also care about the, the helmets. We know that a helmet cannot prevent a concussion. We understand that. But what we do need to do is make sure that the helmets are certified. So all helmets every two years must be mm -hmm. recertified, reconditioned. After 10 years, a helmet goes out of the rotation. Uh, we have rules and regulations now that deal with the length of a football practice. Uh, we now require uh, during uh, the heat and humidity days uh, that we use the wet bulb globe 
uh, temperature device right. to measure heat and humidity, yeah. and that's for any sport. So we're doing our share, and but it doesn't stop. Yeah. We just have to constantly be uh, on the cutting edge to try to make sure, not just football, but mm -hmm. soccer, cheerleading, yeah. anything that we offer, mm -hmm. that those young people are safe. So look into your crystal ball. What's the future of the NTHSAA? It would be wonderful if in five, ten years, whoever's sitting in, in my chair, whether that's <laughs> me or somebody else, would be able to say, you know what, we have a real good handle on this thing called sportsmanship. Yeah. But then I think the bigger challenge for us will be what we talked about a moment ago, trying to, con trying to look at the level playing field. We want every child who walks into that front door of a school have the opportunity to participate if they choose. So how do we do that for the member schools that exist from Manio to Murphy? And so much so that not only the membership feels good about it, but that the general public, when mm -hmm. they hear NCHSAA, they can say, oh, those are those people who offer opportunities to play during the regular season. They offer great championship experiences, and they keep our kids safe, and they're teaching great mm -hmm. lessons. That's what I want to have happen as we continue to march forward. here to Keenan Stadium to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Halftime Report. I am here with Assistant Commissioner James Alverson. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Allison. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. The snow is coming down. It is, it is an exciting day out here on the field. Uh, we do have a couple questions for you, though. Uh, with the weather the way it is and uh, the digital and the media world colliding, how do you offer, how are you offering these games to the, your fans this year that couldn't make it to the games? Well, you know, the weather's fine. Everybody really should come on out. I mean, I know I see all these fans sitting up underneath the overhangs here at Keenan, but we just got to get them to come on down. It's really fine, isn't it? Aren't you? It afraid? absolutely is. It has been a fun day, and I would rather see snow any day than rain. How about you? I would too, but right now uh, we've got great football games. And what we're able to do, Allison, is we're able to provide, obviously you guys are providing local broadcasts in all the local markets for as many games as possible in each market, all the way from Asheville, all the way out to to the coast of Greenville, Newburgh, Washington area. And we appreciate you guys at Sinclair really being able to do that. We've also partnered with the NFHS Network uh, and they carry all of our other state championships. So not just football and basketball, they're carrying soccer, volleyball, softball, baseball when we get to that time of the year. So for $9.95 a month, people are able to go to nfhsnetwork.com. They're able to get all the great content from all over the nation, but also including North Carolina state championships. And so we'd really encourage people to check that out. If you don't see the game in your area locally, uh, over the air with Sinclair, you could go find it at nfhsnetwork.com. Which I think is so great, especially for maybe a grandmother or an aunt or someone that, that can't be here and actually can't make it. It's great to be able to offer that with the technology now. So I know everybody appreciates that. Um, I do have a question for you regarding classifications. In North Carolina, as you know, there are eight classifications. Tell us about how you got there and, and how that happened. 
Well, we actually have four classifications, Allison, and the way that it works for football specifically is that we subdivide all of our classifications of the subdivision. It started out as there's such a big disparity in the number of students at each 1A school. So we had 1A schools that had 100 students. We had 1A schools that had 800 or 900 students. And that's a big disparity in the number of student athletes that you're able to put on a football field. And the smaller schools felt like they just weren't able to compete in the playoffs. So 1A football coaches back all the way in 2000 asked if they could subdivide their playoffs. You qualify the full 64, however, however many are in that bracket at 1A is 48. And then on the day of seating, we subdivide based on the number of students in that school. Well, every, all the other coaches in 2A, 3A, 4A, they saw it. They're like, you know what? That's a great idea. We should all do it. And so now we have eight classifications for football as you got the two AA and the 2A here today at Keenan Stadium. And the larger schools are in the 2 AA and then the smaller schools from that classification in the 2A. I think it sounds like you're uh, wanting to make things fair there and just make all teams really have an equal opportunity to win what, of course, is the, the greatest thing as an athlete. Um, so I want to I ask you one last question about um, – Maybe your favorite memory here. It is pretty exciting to be here. And tell us what your favorite memory is. So two years ago, before I joined the association, I was actually a radio broadcaster in the Triangle area, and I broadcasted high school games. We did a game on Friday night here. It was the 3A state championship game in 2015 between Rocky Mount and South Point High School in Belmont. And that game was a phenomenal football game. Ended 21-21 went to overtime. There were great fourth down conversions late down the stretch. Rocky Mount came back to tie the game with about two minutes left in the ball game. They got a stop on South Point to get that game to overtime. And then a kid kicked about a 34, 40 yard field goal to win the football game in overtime, 24, 21. Phenomenal football game. One of the best I've ever seen in high school level. And it was at a state championship game right here in Keenan Stadium. So it was really special. Wow, well, that sounds like today, like I said earlier, this one might come down to who has the most heart. And it sounds like that's what happened there. Athletic Association halftime report. Back to you guys. Welcome back to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Championships Halftime Report from Keenan Stadium. Patrick Canis, Jay Sonhalter, and there we see it. High Brighton trailed 7-0 after a quarter, Jay. Reeled off 16 straight on a couple of big plays, not the least of which was the safety in the end zones by Skyland Thomas. As we take a look at some of the highlights from this first half, broken into very uh, exact segments. Well, Melvin Scott, that first drive is third down, and he took it the distance, hit a home run a strong run to the outside and just the speed to take it away. Now, after this run, Patrick, he was quiet. Not a lot of carries given his way, but Hyde Bryant really took over. 
especially in the second quarter. But it was an interception here, and they really didn't have anything going early in that quarter pattern. Yeah. But this is the play that really turned this game on its head. Skyland Thomas after a punt pin. He's dupling back inside the two-yard line. There's the safety, and then all of a sudden, no trick plays got involved, and Highbright kind of found its group. But well, they opened up the passing attack, and there's a trick play with Witherspin throwing a touchdown, then Scott with a long post, and then here their defense really taking over Thomas with the interception, going into half, really gaining that momentum going into halftime. And that interception was very late to the first half. Led to a nine-point lead for Highbright. Let's go downstairs. Allison Aldridge now is with the seventh-year head coach of the Trail East Duplin Panthers Battle Holly. Hi, I'm down here with Coach Holly. Um, both teams have been able to capitalize on some mistakes, I think, in the first half. What did you make? What adjustments did you make at the locker room? We just got to play a little bit better. Uh, we've kind of gift-wrapped a couple of things, but uh, we got to play better. We got to be more positive on offense and, and on first and second down and uh, just keep playing. You know, defense is playing hard. They've get, we've given up some big plays, and... Um, we just got to keep playing and um, see what happens. Right, well, good luck. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Allison. One of these teams will win its first ever state championship and its first ever opportunity. East Duplin trailing to High Brighton, 16-7. Second half is next in Chapel Hill. You have been watching the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Championships Halftime Report from Keenan Stadium here in Chapel Hill. And we are about ready to begin the second half of this 2AA state championship. High Brighton 16, East Duplin 7. Well, Jay, we heard from the two coaches during this intermission. Let's talk adjustments. First off, for East Duplin, stymied in that second quarter. A lot of breakdowns defensively. Had the sack slash safety that seemed to spark the uh, resurgence of Highbright. What are the two or three bullet points you're impressing on your team? Well, the one thing, when I'm talking to my defense is I'm saying, hey, guys, we're going to have to respect the passing attack because they got beat deep twice mm -hmm. on two big passing plays. So those safeties, they're going to have to play back, at least keep one back to defend the pass. And then also I'm telling my team, hey, we've got to win the point of attack. Offense and defense, our linemen have to win it defensively. We need to get penetration because we did good in the first quarter. Quarter. The second quarter, our D-line got pushed back. You were looking right there. That is a live shot as we welcome everyone joining us on the NFHS Network. We're live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I kid you not, the snow was picking up right at kickoff. 
tapered during the second quarter. It has now returned. Big, furry, soft flakes that uh, High Brighton is right now fully enjoying with a 16-7 lead. And all 16 points, if you're just joining us now, occurred in that second quarter. Let's talk adjustments for the High Brighton Panthers. And right now, Clay Lewis has to feel a whole lot better than he did after the first quarter of this contest. But where are his areas of concern, Jay? Well, I think you, you have to realize if you're on High Brighton, They've got two outstanding running backs on Scott and Benson, and you've got to tell your team, hey, listen, we've got the lead, but we need to continue to stop the run. There was a couple big runs by those guys, by the defense, especially Tassinari. He's going to have to shadow those running backs. And also, out of the backfield, Hall had a couple big gains. So I think it's going to come down to, really for both teams, Patrick, it's going to be turnovers and then line play. Whoever wins those two areas is going to win this ball game. And the third quarter underway, and that kick goes into the sideline. There'll be a violation, which will give East Oakland excellent field position to begin this third quarter. Let's put it in perspective for East Duplin. They come in undefeated, 15-0. They basically ravaged just about every opponent they've had. The fact that they were limited to only seven points as the High Brighton fans are celebrating right now and maybe yelling and screaming to stay a little <laughs> bit warm here. But the fact that they've been held to only seven points from that first possession of the first quarter, this is a high-powered offense that they know how to make adjustments to put some serious points up. Yeah, and the concern I would have is they haven't really been in this position. So how are they going to react? But, you know, when you get in the half and you make those adjustments, and I think for them and really both teams, You've got to give the ball to your best players. And Scott and Benson, those are the two best running backs on the team. So you've got to let those guys get off here in the second half. All right, Cameron Hall will hand it off to Benson, trying that left side. There just has not been a whole lot inside the tackles, not just for East Duplin, but especially for High Brighton in that opening quarter. Not a lot of territory. The uh, defensive front four have really been doing a terrific job. Yeah, and they've been controlling it. And it's because of leverage, but also getting off the football if I'm on these offensive staffs, I'd maybe go on two or go on a quick count. You've got to change things up to keep the defensive lines off balance. Cameron Hall takes a glance at the play call to the sideline. Now remember, the only scoring drive East Duplin had was not a result of a 13 or 16 play drive as they stay inside the tackles here and very little there. And who's the man on the scene? Yep. Charles Tassinari once again. He has been ubiquitous in this game for the High Brighton defense. Third down. Uh, you got to find a way to block him. I mean, he's been all over the field. We've called his name numerous times, and he flashes. You know, he's playing at a different speed than everybody else. You'll see him right there, middle linebacker, unblocked, and he goes up there and drills him down. You've got to get on him and put a hat on a hat on him. He's the one guy you really have to if you're on offense. For Love his history, Alex, and there's a lot of coaches in the Northwestern Foothills Conference glad that he's a senior. Third down and long. They will throw back to the quarterback, making the grab Cameron Hall, but he'll go for a loss. The defense stands tall once again for High Brighton. Tyler Watson was there along with Hayden White, and it's fourth down, a three and out for East Duplin. And White He's been outstanding. He's on the outside here again. He sniffs out this trick play with the ball going back to Hall, and he stayed at home defensively and getting off the field. You know, that's the exact start you want. You had the momentum in the first half, and now here picking it up again with a big stop on defense. Now remember, it's Miles Simon who's back to return the punt. He's moving forward toward midfield because back in the second quarter, not necessarily in this area on the field, but Cameron Hall, the quarterback for East Duplin, is also their punter, and he burned High Brighton for a fake of 21 yards. So they press everybody up toward the line, and he's going to do it again. He's swerving. He's thinking about throwing. Is he thinking about kicking? He is improvising and sending that punt, spinning inside the 50. It went from a punt to maybe a punt to maybe a tuck and run to maybe a pass to a last-second kick. All the options on the table. A good poise by Cameron Hall to make something out of it. Yeah, I'm just amazed he was able to <laughs> run around like that and not get hit and just get the ball off, let alone hit a nice punt there. And I mean, that ball, once he got it off, it took a nice little bounce. But good job by him recognizing it and going for it. And then when he realized it wasn't there, turning a disaster into a positive play. I might be dating myself, but that looked like a punt you could do on Tecmo Bowl <laughs> on yeah. Nintendo back in college. First down, a high Brighton. And about a two-yard pickup through the middle. 16-7, high Brighton leading, White the ball carrier. 
And again, the defense for Highbright, they only gave up that one long play. I mean, they have been yeah. solid everywhere. There have been very little threats down the field. The passes that we've seen Cameron Hall make uh, really have, have not been strong targets. A couple of interceptions. But just that one 81-yard run by Melvin Scott on the first possession of the game. That's all East Duplin has been able to put together. Little toss, space, step, held up Skyland Thomas. And good recovery, stretching that play out by the defense of East Duplin. And Witherspoon had an outstanding block on this play, clearing the path. A good job. You know, he's the main guy getting the ball most of the time, but making a block there and going over the sideline. Yeah, Thomas, like Thomas Field around that there. right ankle. Could be could be cramps on this very cool and snowy day. The athletic training staff taking a look at him. It was Skylin Thomas who had that sack in the end zone for the safety that sprang that 16-point run in the second quarter. This is third down, a short three for Highbright. And that will not be enough. Driven back Wyke one more time. Brings up fourth down on the plus side of the 50. You need a couple of yards. They're up by nine. We'll see how Clay Lewis wants to play this, Jay. What's What are all the options here for a head coach? Boy, interesting call here because you say, hey, our offense is rolling. We can really seize, control the momentum, or, you know, we can trust our special teams. And you know, I think the smart play here, the safe play, would be bring the punt unit out. Haney has done an excellent job kicking the ball, and, that's what he's going to do. Yep. He's going to punt and trust your special teams. And meanwhile, East Duplin does not put anybody back. Protecting against a potential fake, and Haney will send it on its way. And a couple of high ride players inside the 10-yard line waiting for this one to roll dead, which it does cover up down at the 9. So excellent work by Haney. 7.29 left, third quarter, 16-7. High All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. <sighs> go to right, go to left, go fake them up. Mama, go. Oh, mama! She did it. Again. You can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Yeah. Uh-huh. Back at Keenan Stadium at the campus of UNC. Big first down play by Jalen Thomas. Gets East Duplin a bit out of jail. And now spinning forward is Chris Benson. A pickup of nearly nine. So a long run by Thomas for about 31 yards. And now the accelerate being tapped a bit by East Duplin. Some two positive rushing plays. Yeah, I think smart by Coach Holly to pick up the tempo here. They're running to the line quicker, starting to make their adjustments and snap the ball and try to put the defense on their heels. Second and short. Thomas on the jet sweep. Looks for a block. Can't cut it back up inside before he is taken down again by Tassinari and company, but will have first down yardage. And again there, it's going to be a first down, but it was Wyke. You know, he's the guy setting the edge on the outside. Number two, he's been all over the field. He's predominantly you know, the guy that's trying to bring the ball and push it back inside, hold contain, and he did it there again. Because if he gets pushed inside, Patrick, that's going to be a home run. That's yeah. going to be a long play, but he's able to contain that ball. What battle, Holly? He's in that Mike Singletary linebacking position <laughs> right now. He knows how important this drive is for his Panthers. First down, trailing by nine. Benson got a little bit more push by the left side of that offensive line. He'll pick up about four. As this game continues to move forward, you know, these seniors, this is their last ball game of their high school career, maybe the last ball game they ever play. So you've got to remember that for these guys, as the game goes down, you've got to put it all out on the field and try to do whatever it takes to win this game. 
On the sweep, Devon Hunter, room up the left side. Flag came in late. He will drive across the 35-yard line, tackled out of bounds, but this might be an illegal block on East Duplin. Officials will collaborate. And this one's coming back. So just as East Duplin begins to get momentum, stringing four or five positive plays in a row, they've had many penalties, but that's a costly one. Holding offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Three play, second down. The gates of first down, and it makes it about second and 15. Let's go back to Chris Benson, their star running back, who's uh, kind of been their, their leader offensively over his four years. He's pushing 5,000 career yards. You feel that he's getting a little bit closer to breaking off a big run. Not quite there yet, but they will need him before this one's over if they're going to rally for the win. And out to about midfield. Third down and long, fourth coming for East Duplin. Tassinari again there in positive yards, but these third and long situations is not conducive to the style of play they want. Not a throwing team as this wind picks up. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be even tougher to throw the ball than even the start of this ball game. No and wind stumbling, keeping his balance. Cameron Hall drops the ball, picks it up, loses his balance for good. And it's a loss of 15 on a third and 12 play. Been that type of middle segment of this game for East Duplin. Let's see as he rolled back, he just tripped right there, slipped, and then you couldn't get possession of the ball, and just kind of a disaster from the start. You know, that offensive drive looked so promising. And Look. then you get the penalty, then a passing play that doesn't work out the way you drew it up. And then all of a sudden, it's a punting situation. Taking a look at that replay, he may have stepped on Laquan Brown's foot as he came out with that football. Began kind of the domino effect. Fourth down, Miles Simon back to return the punt. He thinks is coming from Cameron Hall, and it does, but it is short even with the win. And picks up maybe just two yards of carry, and a high Brighton up by nine. It was back on offense in pretty good shape, so the wise decision to punt it away. Give the ball back to East Duplin. They did nothing with it. High Brighton up nine and in possession when we return. Sixteen seven the lead for High Brighton and hey, let's take a look at some of our fans smiling faces with our Lane and Associates Family Dentistry Smile Cam. And Jay, despite all the snow, they're happy to see the snow. <laughs> they know Christmas is on the way and maybe state championship. There she is. She's happy. It's a good smile. And notice all of the other accessories, the yeah. jackets, the scarves, the mittens. They're toughing it out, out there in these winter conditions. Again, each of these schools playing in their first ever state championship. A reason for a broad smile today. Collectively over about 105 years of high school football. No opportunities to play for a title. 
until today. 16-7, High Brighton with the lead. And it's Panther football again as Jones goes for about a yard. And at this stage of the game, we've now kind of seen High Brighton settle into what they do best. Their defense, which has given up less than five points a game, they've not yielded a thing since that first long uh, run by Melvin Scott in the first quarter. Now they can, they're up two scores. They can turn some clock and quickly get this game's way fourth quarter. Around on the right side, very little there for McKinley Witherspoon. It's been interesting is they really haven't needed the major services of Witherspoon. They've ridden him all season long, but it's been kind of his supporting cast that's gone through today. You know, Patrick, for them, they're sitting on the driver's seat. They're very comfortable right now. But the one thing that can change the momentum is a turnover. And with these conditions for them, they have to protect the football. And knowing that East Duplin down, they're desperate. And they saw Highbrine take control with a safety, a big play on defense. If you're on the defense side for East Duplin, you're going after that ball, trying to create a spark. Third down and eight. Scott, he will throw toward the sideline, and it is incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Pinkleton, the intended receiver. So there's the quick three and out that East Duplin needed, and only used a little more than a minute off of the clock. A little surprised they threw it there because the clock off. That's not the strength. And when they did have success throwing it, it was because of a trick play. <laughs> then or it was going also, the other side of the field. Yeah, going the other side of the field against the wind. So they're not the drive they were looking for. And East Duplin here, potential good field position. So back to punt it away, Noah Haney, and a change on the punt return team. We saw Wooley muff one in the first half, and now it's Cameron Hall, the quarterback for East Duplin. He's back, pressure, and Haney gets it off. And unreturnable here for Cameron Hall. Takes another terrific high Brighton roll inside the 15. Haney has a rabbit's foot in his back pocket of his pants. He's had a big day. He's been unbelievable. I mean, he's been a huge weapon and just the way he's been able to flip the field. And also, he had the loft on that one that where the, it was muffed. So he created a turnover for his offense. And it was a defensive end, 6'2", 225. He's a big guy, but he's got a special talent kicking the ball. 2.58 left in the third quarter. High Brighton with a 16-7 lead. And I like this strategy here by Clay Lewis. He's forcing East Duplin to prove that it can march the length of the field, something that East Duplin has been unable to do over the course of this game. And again, all the points we've seen scored have been going this direction right now for East Duplin. Nothing the opposite way. We're only three minutes away from that fourth quarter where the conditions get a little bit more challenging for East Duplin offensively. Split back formation. Thomas in motion. And Thomas on the jet sweep, takes it, room on the edge, and he steps out of bounds back at the 33-yard line. That's when Joel Moore came down after a pickup of 14. Similar play is the one that sprung Melvin Scott to the first quarter. And Laquan Brown, that block on White to the outside, that's the key right there, allowing Thomas to use his speed, break the edge. You know, it's his one-on-one -on -one blocking, not only up the middle, but on the outside between these running backs and defensive backs. That's really kind of the unnoticed part of this game that's enabled some of the big runs. Going a gain of 18, first down, East Duplin, trailing by nine. And on the inside handoff, not much there for Laquan Brown. Laquan twisted Brown down after maybe a yard. Tackle number 36, Kyle Tassinari. Tassinari on another tackle. He has to be pushing double digits <laughs> in this one. You know, and I wouldn't run the ball up the middle. It's, it's like, why do that when he's having an outstanding ball game? You need to run it away from him and use the speed of your excellent running backs. And Chris Benson lines up right behind Cameron Hall. Laquan Brown again. Couldn't get through. Matt right in the 35-yard line. Who's there one more time? Charles Tassinari. Look at him here. He, he looks physical. He looks like a football player, but you can just tell the way he plays. Look at him in the middle, number 36. Unblocked. You've got to put somebody on him. And he was kind of just sitting there waiting, and then boom, he pounced on him. Pretty sure we already know who the defensive MVP for High Brighton is going to be today. Big play now for here for East Duplin, third and nine. 
snow continues to fall at an increased rate. Jed Sweet, Jalen Thomas can't get the edge this time. Spun down by Hayden Wyke, and it's fourth down for East Duplin. Now inside of a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. As much as Battle Holly wants his team to get going, and you know, you're always tempted to get your team a first down, but here, when you're backed up fourth down, fourth and sixth situation, you got to punt the ball and trust that your defense can get it back to you. And again, Highbright, they will only be fooled one time in this game by Cameron Hall in that fake punt, kind of punt option. They're not deploying Miles Simon all the way back. And Hall will boot it away, and there's nobody back to return this one. And it takes a very good East Duplin roll and comes absolutely dead at the 20-yard line. So an effective kick by Cameron Hall. 59 seconds left, third quarter, and High Brighton still leading by nine. And you made a good point about not having a returner back there to stop the fake punt, but also I think it's smart because you don't want to really give your returner an opportunity with this weather condition to drop it or to have a muff, so it's better to have him up there and just play it safe. And even though field position here is bad, you weren't going to be able to catch that ball anyways if you're back in fielding position because it was a line drive to the left. East Duplin led 7-0 after the first quarter. The game was... In firm control until a safety by Skyland Thomas began to turn things around. 16 straight points, and now a scoreless third quarter winds down. Pretty good first down pickup by Wyke. Final 45 seconds of the third quarter. Well, I saw the last drive. Hi, Brian, threw the ball. I would not throw it. I would keep the ball on the ground, use this clock up as much as possible. Again, lean on your offensive line. This is a huge offensive line. The smallest guy is 230 pounds. Everybody else is above, so they're big and they're physical. Option fake. Holding is the quarterback, and Jalen Scott corkscrewed down in what should be the final play of this third quarter. He picks up four. And it'll be third and short for Highbright. And they're in no hurry to get one more playoff on the sideline to the Highbright Panthers. Four fingers are up. One quarter away from their first ever state championship. Highbright signals to their crowd, making the trip from Lenore, 158 miles away. They're 12 minutes away from a state championship. 16-7, Highbright after three. Highbright by nine, start of the fourth quarter. Let's go down to a somewhat chilled Allison Aldridge. Allison? Hi, I'm down here on the sidelines on the Highbright side, and it is exciting right now. These guys know they have 12 more minutes before this is decided. Uh, it's going to be a great rest of the fourth quarter. 
All right, thanks a lot, Allison. Jade, keys for East Oakland into this fourth quarter. Offense really showed no life, and they need two scores. Well, the key is they've got to get off the field. They've got to get a spark going. But if, if their defense can't create a big play here, whether it's on this one or again, they're going to eat up the clock. High Brighton is going to control this game with the time of possession. And they will continue this drive. Hayden Wyke secures the football, picks up about six off the left side. And with every first down and every successive three down series that High Brighton gets, Precious moments coming off that clock with a nine-point lead. Well, and the obvious, you know, thing is they're going to have to score multiple times a two-possession deficit, but it starts with the defense because High Brighton will eat this thing up if they're not forced off the field. Jalen Scott, hands off. There's big space. Witherspoon almost broke free. Ankle tackle around the 45-yard line. Maybe a state championship saving tackle by Devon Hunter. Look at this burst. He followed his offensive line and then just took off. It was Corpening leading the way, the sophomore left guard coming and trapping the defensive tackle, and then Witherspoon just shot there. Good job lowering his pads to finish off that run. Cameron Hall, the big tackle for East Duplin. Gain him nine, second and short, little delay, hand off, and Witherspoon goes nowhere this time. Throwing back for a loss. Lamaru Harry. So that changes the look now from second and one to third and four. And you figure that Highbright is going to be conservative in their play calling. And even if it's fourth and short, probably punt the football away. So this is a big moment for East Duplin. Yeah, for both teams. If I'm Highbright and I'm running the ball to the outside, I'm getting away from those two stud defensive tackles, Herring and Miller. I'm trying to get the ball to the outside and let Witherspoon use his speed. And we have a timeout taken by Highbright. 10.34 to play, fourth quarter. 16-7, Highbright in the lead. A big third down played for Jalen Scott and the Panthers when we come back. Today's action and memories were captured by Matt Kraft's photographer during today's championship event. Brighton by nine, and unquestionably the biggest defensive play of the game for East Duplin. Third down and four, early state is fourth quarter, handoff through the middle, and that may be enough for the High Brighton first down. And on the carry, Charles Tassinari, the fullback, who's been their stud on the defensive side. Power yards, and does Jay get the first down? He did his job. That was his sixth carry of the season, so little use. They let him run wild on defense, but knowing that was a critical moment, Coach Lewis put his stud in the ball game, and he drug a couple of East Duplin defenders, and what a pivotal play. They're picking up the first down. And now the clock will march toward 10 minutes. New set of downs for Highbright, leading by nine. Toss to the right. Stutter step move, Witherspoon, and spun down, out of bounds, short to midfield. Maybe two for Witherspoon. Well, and now for East Duplin, this game getting closer to the end. And during practice, you practice turnover drills. You practice stripping the ball, trying to create turnovers. Every team does it, you know, but now it's time to execute. You've got to create a big play on defense, try to get the ball back for your offense. We were talking with Clay Lewis earlier in the week about his quarterback, Jalen Scott. He says he doesn't put a whole lot on him to win games, but his decision-making has... Got much, much better. Lost the football, though, on the exchange. 
And we do not yet have a signal. And I think I Brighton got back on it. And they did. He may have pulled out a little bit early. And nearly the turnover that East Duplin desperately needed. Yeah, it just didn't really get full possession from Josh Baker. The snap between the quarterback center exchange wasn't smooth, but lucky to jump on that ball. Because that could have been a, you know, that pivotal turnover we're talking about. Very close to happening. Looks like Marquand Jones just got on it. Third down, seven to go for Highbright. Scott looking to the sideline. Contact as the pass sail over the intended man's head. Looking for Marquand Jones. No flag. Might have been uncatchable. And it's fourth down. Highbright fans unhappy with the yellow flag still in the back pocket. Very surprised they threw it, but it was picket here on the hit. Fourth down. Ball looked high. I don't know if that was catchable, but still pick it a little bit early there. <laughs> Made it close. But I don't think that ball was catchable. And again, a little bit surprised they're throwing there on third down. The clock is your ally here. A chance to, even if you don't get it, to take off 30 or 40 well, seconds. And even there, that wasn't going to pick up the first down. That was a short passing play and just something that they probably wish they could take back. Here's Haney. Pressure on. He gets it away. Backing up Cameron Hall, and he will let this one roll. Was it a good decision? It was not. Down at the one by Aaron Logan. Well, Haney, uh, he deserves a game ball down. The way he's punted the ball. I mean, he has been instrumental in field position. A big number 52 left footer. Great extension. And gives his team an opportunity to run down there. I mean, that's how you draw it up. And now if you're East Duplin, hey, if we're going to come back in this game, why not do it the hard way? You're on the heels of this end zone, but it's got to start now on this drive to get something going. Cameron Hall has to pick up that football or at least yeah. get on it because now all of a sudden you're in the shadow of your end zone. This is where the rally for High Brighton began, almost the exact spot early in the second quarter when Skyland Thomas knifed in and sacked Cameron Hall for a safety. They got High Brighton on the board. And we have whistles before the play. Clock stops at 8.50. Fire the snap. False start. Offense. At the distance. Not Still much further down. back this ball can go on this penalty. So it's about move it back an inch. But I'll tell you here, when you're condensed like this, and you look and you look at the defense there's that big safety the huge play that really changed the momentum but here now for East Duplin they've got to run the ball to the outside look at High Brighton stacking the box Tassinari came on an a gap blitz and look at that there's about four inches <laughs> between that white line and ball so they're gonna get have to get out of this end zone get some room and they will little territory here Chris Benson between the tackles out to about the five they need to go 99 yards and about two and a half feet and get the ball back and score again with eight and a half to go trailing by nine. Uh, they got to play up tempo too. I mean, they're going to have to get in and out of the huddle quick and get up to the ball and get it snapped because the time is continuing to dwindle here. Cameron Hall operates from the gun. The heels right on the goal line. And now they reshift. Benson, their big play man, is on the right wing. Here's a reverse out of the end zone. Jalen Thomas stutter steps and close to the marker and will have the first down to 12. And Hall, he got a pancake block. Look at number 10, the quarterback. We'll see right here. Boom, <laughs> right there. He just kind of turned and knocked his man down. That's well, what it did look like Miles Simon was slipping a little bit. Yeah, I mean, already he, he's probably a little bit assisted because of the momentum, but. I mean, no, no doubt, Cameron Hall is going to that sideline later. Oh, so yeah. That, I, I, I get full <laughs> credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably his first pancake block. You don't see that too often, but a nice job by him sealing the edge. Snow diminishing. Hand off Benson. Spin to the 15. And then push back. And that's all High Brighton is wanting to do here. If they are going to allow East Duplin to march down the field, make them do it in 18 plays in six minutes. Tassinari again, and keep everything in front of him. That's the approach on the front four and the three linebackers. Second down at six. 
East Newfoundland still all three timeouts. Toe tap sends Hunter in motion. Hunter on the jet sweep and a little bit of a crease. Angled out by Simon. Devin Hunter on the carry. A first down Andrew. again for East Newfoundland. Well, and these runs to the outside, we talked about, that's where they have to go with it. Now the pressure is on these running backs, making the block to the outside. We see Brown right here. He held up like just enough and then. Simon came over there, finished it off, but that's what enabled that first down was the block by Brown. And now we really do see a noticeable tempo increase by Cameron Hall and East Duplin in the backfield. Tassinari, he'll take down Benson. There's a high tackle up around the shoulders or neck area. No flag came in. And Tassinari still continues to be the thorn in the sides of East Duplin. Yes. Right here, unblocked. I mean, he's not getting touched. Uh, the offensive line has to make sure they get on him. You cannot let him run wild at three. Underneath seven minutes to play. Hall with a blocker. Short little toss off the mark. And Chris Benson throwing a little bit in front of him. It's a third and long. And this is where it's tough. If you're a team that doesn't throw the ball, that's not the one of your strengths. When you're behind and you have to throw the ball to get big yardage plays, you know, this isn't what you do best. So now you're in a situation third and long. Do you run the ball here or try to throw where you don't have, you have, don't have success going back this season? And you also have just a limited number of pass plays in your playbook. Line of game is at 35. Third down and 11 for East Duplin. Another little inside reverse handoff for only a couple of yards. Watson, Tassinari, right defense they they know they're in control right now it's fourth down decision for battle holly down two scores with 625 to go are they going or kicking here remember their quarterback is the punter so cameron hall will line up in a punt formation but i'm not sure they have enough time to waste here and boot it away this could be a fake we saw the punt slash option for cameron hall earlier in the game in the second quarter and he picked up 21 yards in a first down will he do it again he's looking to throw he will throw and it's caught and there's first down yard and spinning forward dorian pickett there is the fake big play for east duplin first down oh, great job executing hall came up he moved up a little bit from his normal punt formation and then just threw it right over the shoulders of the defender and pickett he dropped the pass earlier but there the tight end with his fifth catch of the season, picking up a huge play in Coach Holly. Making it happen. Oh, really don't think he had much other choice. Now, throw it again. Flares it to the right side and nearly a good adjustment by Pickett. It's incomplete second down. Although it's interesting, back to that fourth down fake punt to the pass by Cameron Hall. Almost tells me that he had more trust in completing a pass out of that formation then yeah. under center or out of the shotgun because again they don't have many pass plays that Cameron Hall can well, and, and we saw earlier East Duplin have success when Hall was in the shotgun and just kind of roaming around and then he took off and used his legs. I think that's something they have to do even though that's not maybe a normal formation where you're kind of playing street ball there. They've got to find a way to let him get to the point. A couple of offensive linemen jump. That will back East Duplin up five yards with five fifty left. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. It has been a fairly clean game in, in terms of penalties here. And here's a look at the couple of jumpers. Charles Hartman, number 77, on one side of the line. And on the other side was Tavian Hall. Second down. Thomas in motion. Again, the jet sweep to him with some blockers ahead. And out across the 40, still striving forward. So about the 43-yard line will bring up third and five. But again, the clock will continue to run here at the high school level, even going out of bounds. And we'll probably see East Duplin for a crucial time yeah. on the clock. That's why these guys have to sprint back to get on the ball. And they need to get their play call in. Because right now, looking over the sideline, they're wasting time. Every second's valuable. Hall marches towards offensive line, so they are aware what play they're going to run. Out of the gun is Hall. Straight away, no Hall kept it, and thrown for a loss in the backfield. Looked like Benson was the guy, but instead, it was Hayden Wake 
who was uh, tested on the sideline by the athletic training staff a couple of minutes ago, but White comes through first into the backfield, and Cameron Hall could not juke him out of that tackle. You don't see many missed tackles. We haven't seen it today, and that's a sign of a good defense. And White there really holding edge on that corner, the line of scrimmage there, and staying low and making the tackle, and now another fourth down. And again, this is really championship points if you're at Wimbledon for Highbright. You get a stop. This championship is likely yours, and now we get a timeout taken by East Duplin because of the magnitude of the moment. It's fourth and seven. The undefeated season of the state championship on the line facing East Duplin. Four down, down nine. Coming back. Sixteen seven, high bright in fourth quarter, winding down, and let's take a let's take a look at some of our fans smiling faces with our Lane and Associates Family Dentistry Smile Cam. Well, that's over on the high bright sideline, so they are happy. You know, it doesn't matter how cold it is if you're winning the game, you're going to be happy. Here we go on fourth down, threading the pass, and it's caught by Dorian Pickett. The throw of the game by Cameron Hall keeps East Duplin's heartbeat kicking. Well, Pickett coming down. up again with a huge play. Now the tight end, he's big. He's got the height advantage, six foot two. We'll see it here, Hall. Just a little hitch route or curl route about 12 yards deep, and then Pickett in these conditions able to hold on. 4.25 left fourth quarter. East Duplin needs two scores. They're at the high Brighton 35. Hall gives to Benson to the right side. Can't quite break through. Turns out five. And now again, you need full tempo for East Duplin. They're not huddling. And the onus falls on Cameron Hall to get that line up and deploy what play that the sideline is calling quickly. How about the senior coming up big with a couple passing plays? Two fourth down conversions on this drive the snap under four minutes to go he's looking down the field has a man and it's a connection and incomplete knocked out of the hands of Jalen Thomas broken up by Pinkleton third down and a couple of receivers looked open for the moment as this ball was released but as Thomas cutting across the middle of the field and so close the leading receiver for East Duplin almost able to come up with it Boy, what a play that would be, but nice job by the defender knocking that ball loose. 3.47 left, third down and five. It's tough throwing the ball against the middle of this defense. High Brian playing single high safety. Hunter in motion. He gets the call, cuts it back, only picks up one. And here we are again as the High Brighton sideline waves to their fans who made the trip from Lenore. One play away from potentially a state championship with 331 and counting, and another fourth down for East Duplin. Well, we've seen it twice already. Where has East Duplin gone? They've gone to pick it. I would look for him on a short, quick route, getting the ball out of Hull's hand. But look for your big tight end. He's got the size advantage. He's on the right side in the wing formation, number 15. With the dirty up jerseys, yeah. <laughs> hard to miss. Out of the gun hall. There goes Pickett in motion. He'll reset on the left. Fourth and four. Hall drops straight back. There is Pickett over the middle, stretching forward, and he will be very close to the first down. I think he's got enough. 
depends on the spot right at the 25-yard line, which is right where the markers were. I don't think Pickett got a great spot by the official on the far side of the field, but they do signal first down. Uh, what a play call, and that was Pickett. It was a little screen he hid behind the line of scrimmage and a last second popped out. See Hall right over the middle, and then just the power <laughs> to get yeah. just enough by the whiskers to pick up that first down. A couple of his offensive linemen got in from behind. He kind of shoved him forward just enough. 237 and rolling fourth quarter. Highbright with a nine point lead. Benson for some hard yards to the 21. He's Duplin, two timeouts left. And again, they need two scores. Even a touchdown and two draws them to within 16, 15. So this has to happen fast. Second down and six. And if they do score, they're gonna have to do onside kick. Not enough time here to kick the ball off. So it's still doable, but you're right. They're gonna have to execute and do it quickly. I will pose you a question after this play, provided East Duplin does not score. Man in motion, Devon Hunter. Hunter takes it around the right side. 15, gets the sideline, still on his feet, and drives inside the five yard line. He's down to the one. Devon Hunter, he's been at his most usefulness for this East Duplin offense on plays like these. The jet sweeps, turns the corner, and makes a couple moves in traffic. Well, it is Benson, the block out front by the star running back, clearing the way in the offensive line as well. Hall and Grady, Miller, the center, all clearing the path. And they will mark him down. High Brighton wants a timeout here. They will mark him down at the one, but back him up to about the two-yard line as the ball is actually knocked out of the hands of Devon Hunter that went out of bounds. And Highbright calls a timeout. My question was going to be, if there wasn't a big run near the goal line, would you conce conceivably kick a field goal with about two minutes left? Because he need a second possession anyway. And then try the onside kick. Otherwise, if yeah. you take the clock down to 30 seconds, what, what options do you have? I would say yes, because at that point, the clock is in your front, and, and you've got to give yourself an opportunity with the onside kick to, to win the ball game. So that is what I would do. I would have gone ahead and kicked that. Now a different scenario here with you're on the doorstep of the goal. Right. Yeah, certainly it all changed with that big run by Devon Hunter. And a reminder that you are watching and have the capability watching all eight state championship games streaming online nfhsnetwork.com nfhsnetwork.com we have a second game here in keenan later on tonight seven o'clock kick will feature wallace rose hill and reedsville and a reminder that the games at wake forest game times have been changed so the 4a final between scotland county and harding later on tonight at seven o'clock 150 left and the direct snap toward the goal line, and not quite enough. That ball never got in the hands of Cameron Hall, but stopped near the goal Devin line was Hunter Devon Hunter. Precious seconds ticking down, 136 one. to go. Two timeouts, freeze Duplin. One. Split back formation, handoff, and Benson will twist his way in. Touchdown, East Duplin. 16-13. With a minute and a half to go, now the question is, you really only need the extra point here. You don't need to go for two, because if you miss, a field goal ties it. Let's go to the touchdown carry by Benson. But Benson just off the left side, Craig Wright, wide silence, clearing the edge. And Benson, you know, he, he's done a good job today. It's just been tough playing from behind, but this team, they found a way to fight back, and not a lot going their way, but now here, an opportunity, if they get this onside kick, to make things interesting. Well, this is so important. Jackson Murray will hold the extra point attempt by Jesus Navarro to make it a two-point game. Clean snap, and the extra point is good, and it is 16-14, and now Battle Holly, I don't know how much his team practices this. They haven't had many close games all year long, but now they need the onside kick thanks to that first score for a high bright early in the second quarter the safety by skyland thomas how often do you think high school teams work on the onside kick well everybody practices it you just never know when you're going to have to use it and the question is how often do you practice it and do you truly practice it when you have full pads on when the pressure's on to recover it you know there's a difference just kicking 
the ball and when you have helmets on versus being live action. So it's going to come down to this here, and we talked about that safety. You never know which play in a ball game is really going to change the course. That changed the momentum, but you look at the scoreboard, those two points have been huge. Right, tactically for Blake Holly, what is he telling his team, particularly his kicker and also the team, got to make sure the ball travels 10 yards before you make an attempt on it. Well, that's the key is, first of all, you've got to kick it 10 yards because you can't recover. You're not going to give yourself a chance if it's not 10. So that's key. Number one, kick it 10 yards. Then you're telling your guys, hey, go blow up whoever's in front of you. You want to blow up that first line of defense, and then your outside guys need to go find the football. Now, again, for the receiving team, it doesn't have to go 10 yards. It is, once they touch it, it's a live ball. So what will the strategy be for Navarro? Will he kick it straight away? Will he angle it toward one set of his hands team or another? Will he fake one way and kick it the other? So the option has been decided by his coach, and Navarro's job is to execute the plan. They recover, they have a chance at the state championship. It's a hard bullet, and it's handled by Simon on one hop. That kick went about 18 yards like a missile right into the chest of Miles Simon. So with 129 left, no chance at getting that tip or getting the bounce or the carom. And Hype right now, if they protect the football, will have a shot at its championship. They drilled it, but I'll tell you, Simon, if he didn't catch it, that would have bounced off quickly off those shoulder pads. Because on that play, those hands team guys have so much pressure on them, and Simon able to really secure that ball and they handle that pressure. Here's the situation. He's Dublin still has two timeouts left. But the game clock at 129. You know High Brighton is doing nothing but running the football. And whoever the ball carrier is, ten fingers and thumbs wrapped around the football. And now we get a timeout taken by High Brighton before they run this first play. 16-14. High Brighton with the lead. And there's a look at Battle of Holly. Hoping and praying his team gets one last shot. Well, it's been a, a very, very difficult last couple of weeks on the campus of High Brighton High School. Tragedy struck that school just a couple of weeks ago when a sophomore student named Wesley Oliver was in his father's car heading to school and was struck and killed in an unfortunate car accident on his way to class. It is shaken the uh, high school to its core. All of his friends, all of his colleagues, all of his teachers have been celebrating his life over the last few weeks. Even a couple of weeks ago, as we Wesley, a huge Carolina Panthers fan, High Brighton, as you see, wears the black and red. But in the student and fan section of their regional semifinal game, they all wore Carolina Panthers colors to support Wesley. Uh, certainly our thoughts go to his family his uh, father, Brian, was driving the vehicle. He walked away injured, but otherwise okay. And uh, they're playing this game with a decal on their helmets and absolutely with Wesley in their memories. First down play out to the 45, and we'll see one of the two remaining timeouts taken by East Duplin. Uh, during that timeout, some of the players were talking about holding on to the football. You, you could... You know, imagine what's going on in that huddle, but also not only protecting the football with handoffs, but the s quarterback and center exchange is going to be huge. You know, so much pressure there on Josh Baker and Jalen Scott to handle that ball. Because if you protect the football here, you're going to be a state champion. That play just took five seconds off the clock, but again, only one lonely timeout left for East Duplin. They need a turnover. They need a stop. I mean, if you do the math here, play clock at 25. They will take another timeout after this next play, provided High Brighton doesn't break through and pick up a time, pick up a first down. Let's say a minute 20 after this play to be third down. Play clock would take it down to 55 by the time you need to snap or take a delay, yeah. and then run one, one more play. So maybe at best you might get the football back with I don't know 24, 26 seconds left at best. And that's potentially with a Haney, uh, Haney right. punt, and he's been pinning East Duplin back on their goal line all day long. Well, there's a look at Jalen Scott bringing his team to the line. This is second down, reminding his running backs behind him, hold on to the football, up by two, and they will toss dangerously. 
grabbed by Witherspoon, toward the sideline, and taken down out of bounds. That was a really high risk play call. Putting the ball through the air, a bad toss, a tip. It could be loose, picked up, and running for a touchdown. Dangerous. <laughs> there was a <laughs> defender on picket flying through, too. I mean, it, it was definitely a uh, high risk there on the pick. And there is, as we take a look at one of those high Brighton helmets, the W.O. initials of Wesley Oliver, that 15-year-old sophomore killed just a, a couple of weeks ago. He's in their thoughts. They are now a minute 16 away from a first ever state championship. No more. Here's the handoff. Witherspoon to the 50. He needs the 47 for the first down, and he's close. Off of the high Brighton sideline, they are signaling first down, and the officials will stop the clock. And they will eyeball this one. And if there's a point with the right arm by the official, the state championship will be high Brighton's. And there it is. It's a first down for Witherspoon and High Brighton. And East Duplin is about to be counted out with a minute nine left in this fourth quarter. Well, how about Witherspoon? He's averaging 18.4 yards per rush on the season. I've never seen anything like it. You know, we've seen the speed game to the outside, but there the power, the ability to finish off a run, protect the football, and he's only a junior. So excited to see his potential in the future, not only next year, but at the college level. I've really been impressed with him today. Clock begins to wind down inside the final minute. And the celebration a moment away. They are lined up in the victory formation for Jalen Scott. He will snap it with 47 seconds left. Take a right knee. And High Brighton will have one more snap before they celebrate their first ever championship. And these are the longest seconds for Clay Lewis. Tassinari imploring his team on the sideline. Or, and now we see East Duplin take its final timeout. High Brighton is not going to mind that timeout. One last opportunity for them to fill their lungs with air for this championship celebration. Well, I was looking down the sideline to see if any of the players are over near the Gatorade bucket. <laughs> see if Coach Lewis is going to get frozen tagged. By yeah, them, right? yeah, it's frozen, yeah, They may have hot chocolate down there instead of, <laughs> instead of Gatorade, but an exciting time and you know, for these guys. So much work they put in, and this being the first state championship, you know, what a moment it is down on that field. Well, they were knocking on the door last year, 3A semifinals. Lost a top seed at South Point, 26 Please to nothing. Please reset the clock to 48 seconds. 48 seconds. That is a 22-second tackle. They will not change the ultimate outcome. High Brighton got to the regional finals 2003, 2010, 2016. They had to knock off the four-time defending state champs, Shelby, last week to get here. Shelby scored a touchdown on the game's first play from scrimmage. And that was the only points that Shelby would score in this game. And in a lot of ways, today's game very similar to that. One of the first plays from scrimmage for East Duplin was a long Melvin Scott 81 yard run. And up until about a minute ago, there was nothing doing offensively against this high Brighton Panther defense. Blake Holly. Thinking about what could have been nearly a fumble snap in the victory formation. And the play clock has not yet started. Game clock down to 37. So perhaps one more snap required. Well, East Duplin beaten in the regional finals last year. Yep. And there on the victory formation, there is that bobble by Jalen Scott. Wouldn't that have been? Remarkable. And that was Hall almost getting there, yeah. able to get that ball, but that's why every snap yeah. matters. You never know when the game could change, and it's not over until it hits zero. This will be the final snap. It is taken by Jalen Scott, drops to a knee, and High Brighton has its first state championship. 16-14 over East Duplin.
And the 51-year itch scratched since the doors of High Brighton High School opened in 1966. On this snowy December Saturday in Chapel Hill, the High Brighton Panthers state champions. You know, just that feeling down the field. You have one sideline that you know, one of the best moments of their life, winning a state championship on the other sideline, the sadness, the dejection of having your goal so close and not able to pull it off. But the sportsmanship here so key in both these teams today. I mean, what a physical, well-played ball game. So much to be proud of for both sides. But High Brighton today, they had that adversity at the start of the ball game, that big play, 7-0. Yeah. The first quarter did not go their way, but boy, did they turn it on and it started with that safety. And I was just so impressed by their defense, how well they played physically, but also no missed tackles. I didn't see barely any. I mean, they were fundamentally sound on offense. You know, they're a team that runs the ball and they did a good job of that today, but they opened up the playbook and had a couple huge passing plays. And that's what really gave this offense life when they scored both of those uh, on passing opportunities on the post route with the throw from Witherspoon and then also Scott with his big passing play. 16-14 the final. High Brighton claims the two AA state championships. 158 miles to Chapel Hill from Lenore. Worth every mile. High Brighton, the state champs. Two AA state championship to the High Brighton Panthers, 16-14 in their first ever appearance. Clay Lewis, their head coach, 29th season and his eighth as a head coach. And for the on-field celebration, let's join the public address announcer, Bill Petty. Poor guys. Somebody's got to lose. That's what's awful about these days, right? And 17 North Carolina High School Athletic Association state champions from Lenore, North Carolina, the High Brighton Panthers. We would now like to ask the captains of the state champions to join their head coach to receive their championship plaque and their championship banner.
members of the state champions will also receive special commemorative t-shirts. We are also pleased to honor several outstanding individual performance in this championship games. The award sponsored by the Carolina Panthers for the state runners up, the outstanding defensive player in this championship game as selected by media representative covering this game is number 36, Amaru Herring with 10 tackles and three tackles for a loss. The Outstanding Offensive Player Award goes to number nine, Melvin Scott, with three carries for 108 yards and one touchdown. And now for the state champion, High Brighton Panthers. The outstanding defensive player in this championship game as selected by media representative covering this game is number 36, Charles Casaneri with 16 tackles. Outstanding Offensive Player Award goes to number 52, Noah Haney, with five punts out of six down inside the 20. Ladies and gentlemen, there were many outstanding individual performance in tonight's NCHSAA state championship. However, one stood out as this individual was selected by a panel of media covering tonight's game as the championship's most valuable player. The most valuable player for the NCHSAA state championship from High Brighton, number 21, Miles Simon. Two receptions, 96 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you'll stick around for more of the NCHSAA Football State Championships. The next game here at Keenan Stadium is the 2-8. 16-14, High Brian wins the 2AA State Championship. Clay Lewis, head coach of the Champion Panthers, joins us next.
Right, right, the two AA state champions, a 16-14 win over East Duplin. Our Allison Aldridge is downstairs with the Ebulent head coach of the Panthers, Clay Lewis. Allison. First January, and they, they really put forth a lot of work, and you know they're very deserving. We got a great group of kids, a great community, a great school spirit, you know, and uh, I just couldn't be so any more happy for, for you know for those people. And it's, it's just outstanding. I'm just kind of at a loss for words right now. Taking it all in, I'm sure um, the game really came together for you. We were talking about really the assignment defense your team played, and and I think really helped you bring home the championship. Um, and else you'd like to highlight or talk about? Well, you know, I, again, I just I thought our kids played hard. They played like that all year. All season long, our defense has led our team. And, you know, and, and offensively, we had a very hard time against a very tough uh, East Duplin defense. And uh, we, we didn't move the ball as we have in the past. But, you know, we knew if our, deep, our if we won this game, it would be because of defense. And, you know, that happened tonight. And special teams. Absolutely. Um, in Thank you so much, coaches. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Go enjoy this with your team, your family, your coaches. Um, have a great night. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And uh, that'll close us out here at, the, at Keenan Field for this game. It was um, for the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Uh, we just want to thank you. It's been a terrific game. All right. Thank you very much, Allison. Thank you to Coach Clay Lewis and Jay back up here in the booth. Let's begin on what was a sensational season for East Duplin. They suffered their only loss in the state championship game of their first ever opportunity. Yeah, 15 and 0. I mean, they had an outstanding season. You saw the fight. They got off to the early lead and had to play from behind, but they found a way to get back into the game. Just couldn't finish it off for high drive. Coach Lewis said it started in January. This goals came to realization here today with so much work and effort. So much time that these players, coaches, and fans put into this season for it to cap off with a state championship. It's such a, a special feeling, and you could hear it in his voice. But defense won this ball game. Timely plays on offense. But they've got to be so happy to bring it back to High Bryant High School. All right, we all would like to take a moment to thank all the wonderful folks at the North Carolina High School Athletic Association and all of our other supporters to make these games possible for you viewers at home. We would also like to thank Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, for their contributions to the NCHSAA championship broadcast. Stay tuned. We'll have more exciting North Carolina High School Athletic Association football championships action, including the two-way state championship game here, Wallace, Rose Hill, and Reedsville at 7 o'clock. Congratulations to High Brighton, 16-14, two AA champs. So long from Chapel Hill.